turn yourself into your favorite characters. Who do you want to be today? This is DIY Cosplay Shop. What's up, Internet? My name's Elizabeth Rage, and this is Diablo, the cosplay snack, and welcome to a super spoopy episode of DIY Cosplay Shop. A couple weeks ago on Instagram, I asked you guys whether you wanted to see Emily from Corpse Bride or Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas, and to our surprise, you guys all picked Emily, so here's that video. And here's a snack. Alrighty, so let's take a look at Emily. She has blue hair and blue skin, and I'll show you guys how to do that later. She also has a flower crown that extends down to a veil with some swirly filigree going on on the veil. She also has that on her skirt as well, which has a lot of detail down at the bottom and then kind of ombres up into a more plain top and has a slit in the center so you can see both of her legs, one of which is just a skeleton leg. Um, so that'll be interesting. Uh, she also has exposed ribs as well as one skeletal arm. I have a really interesting way that I think we're gonna do that. Um, it basically involves getting a me-sized skeleton from the Halloween store and um, taking that apart and adding it to my body. Basically we are going to build a beautiful wedding dress and then just completely destroy it and kill it with fire. Like probably actually fire. Like burning the edges is gonna give it a really cool effect so. Awesome, so let's start off with Emily's bodice, which is probably the most intricate part of the costume. Um, for this, I picked up a overbust longline corset from Amazon. You can make your own corset, but this is gonna speed the process along a lot, um, not having to bone the whole thing. Um, you do bone a corset, I'm not saying I'm gonna, okay. And then we're gonna be covering it in fabric to give it the right texture that it needs. After that, we're gonna go ahead and secure this corset together in the front. Um, and we need to cover these clasps and make sure that it won't come apart in the front pretty much ever. It's a little more tedious that way, but it's probably how this piece would have been made. And as well as we'll give you the right shape you need in the front. The first thing I'm gonna do is unlace this corset from the back. So now that our corset is unlaced, we're gonna go ahead and glue down the busk. I'm just gonna use hot glue for this um, because in the past it's always been super sturdy and really easy and accessible. Now that the front is glued together, I'm just gonna go ahead and flip it over and take a piece of heavyweight scrap fabric and glue it down right over the opening just to reinforce everything. You can use whatever you want for this, it's never gonna show. Be warned, hot glue is hot and I get it on my fingers a lot. Now that I have my corset back on the dressmaker's dummy, I've gone ahead and drawn out where about I think the line of the corset should be. You can do this part on yourself. If you don't have a dressmaker's dummy, it'll probably actually fit you better if you do this right on yourself. But for demonstration purposes, I just went ahead and took a silver Sharpie and just drew a line where I think the corset's gonna sit. Now I'm gonna go and cut just slightly under this so that I can reach the boning, snip the boning right above my line, and then fold up the fabric so that everything is secure. So as you can see, I have one side done here. I still need to go ahead and flip it over and glue down this fold right here and then possibly add some fold over elastic as well just to make sure the boning isn't cutting into me and is poking me in the side when I wear it. The steel boning is a little bit difficult to cut. I've had to use pliers to do that instead of my scissors and also rest in peace my scissors when I thought this was plastic boning. I realized the best way to get the boning out is to just cut off the piece at the bottom first, then slide the boning out, cut it where I think it needs to be, and then go ahead and cut the rest of the fabric. This way you don't have to ruin your scissors even more by trying to get through the boning and the fabric at the same time. So now that both sides are cut, it's gonna look something like this. Still gotta try it on, but it took all of these pliers to cut this boning. Yeah, steel boning is no joke, guys. Also, it claimed the life of my dear zebra scissors. The spoopy cosplay episode has already claimed one life. Let's see if we all make it out alive. So I have one side all folded under and glued, and now I just have to do the other side. I went ahead and notched the edges while I was cutting it just to make it easier to fold up. That's just a good way to fold anything on a curved surface. Um, by adding the notches, you'll have a lot more mobility of your fabric. So for this, I'm just gonna take my glue gun and I'm gonna go ahead and just start folding it to the Sharpie line that I drew earlier. Don't worry too much about having this be the straightest edge. Uh, Emily's corset is a little bit jagged and a little bit asymmetrical, so any imperfections are totally fine. It's 
so yeah, that's pretty much the shape that I want it to be. So now I can go ahead and start covering it with the fabric. So for this part, all I'm gonna do is uh, start tacking it down with hot glue. You wanna be really, really careful when you're doing this. Um, since this fabric is very see-through, we're going to see some of the hot glue possibly. So make sure you're using a either a newer hot glue gun or clear glue sticks. This way you don't have any yellow glue showing through. Yeah, so that's about it. I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing the first layer of fabric down. Since this is super see-through, I'm probably gonna do at least two layers of this. This part's totally optional, but I'm gonna add another layer of this fabric on top, just so I can do more with it later when I start distressing it. So after having burned my fingers about 50 more times, the bodice covering is finally done. It is two layers of our fabric and I have left the modesty panel out of the original corset fabric just to make it a little bit more comfortable to wear. This piece probably won't show at all, it's just gonna make it more comfortable when it's laced up. I went ahead and picked up some bridal lace from the craft store and I'm just gonna go and tack that with my hot glue to the top and bottom of the bodice. Uh, it's gonna give it a little more texture and will be where we'll be adding the blue later on. So the bodice is now, for the most part, done. It is lined on the inside so it won't be too scratchy and all of the fabric is securely glued in. Uh, there's appliques on the top and bottom. For as far as the normal version of this dress, bodice is done and I can put away this stupid glue gun that has maimed me like three times already. Next up is the veil. I found this really awesome curtain fabric in the fashion district that had a really nice swirly design on it that totally looks like her veil from the picture. Um, and this is gonna be super simple. I am not gonna do anything fancy. I'm just gonna use my handy dandy serger over here and just serge the edges so they don't fray at all. All that's really left at this point is to attach it to a flower crown, but I'm gonna do that when I style my wig. So I wanted to give the bodice a test fit before I went any further. I'm really liking how it looks so far. I, the, I think the applique trim gives it just enough touch of sparkle. Right now the corset is only about halfway laced up. You can see in the back it's not completely closed. We'll see how it looks when it's all tied together once I have the skirt on, and that is gonna be our next step. For this, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and drape it on myself and use, I think I'm gonna use, end up using four panels for this skirt. Uh, there's a slit in the front, so I'm gonna leave it open here and let it tie in the front so I can easily adjust it every time I wear it. The skirt's gonna be longer in the back to give it that wedding dress train effect. So for the skirt, I took a piece of scrap fabric and made it a mock waistband, just measured it to my waist, and then drew out where I wanted each of the panels to stop. The waist is gonna be a little bit fitted. I might gather it just a little bit to give it a little bit more ruffle, but for the most part, the waist is gonna be super fitted and then this dress will flare out in the back into a train. The front pieces are gonna be straight in the front and then diagonal on the side. So I figured out a slightly easier way to do this. Instead of making it a completely fitted skirt, I'm only gonna be making the front panels fitted. These ones that I cut out earlier, where there's a straight line in the front and a diagonal line in the back, will sit right here at my hips. And then after I cut out two pieces that were exactly the same, like this front piece, I use the rest of the fabric that I have to just line it up with the long side and it'll eventually be gathered in the back so to make a really nice long train. But yeah, so um, right now I'm just doing a basic running stitch through the fabric. This will help to gather the fabric so I can fit all of it onto the triangle shaped yoke that I just made. Um, don't worry about showing any of the ruffles. All of this will be hidden under your corset. Emily's skirt wraps right over left. So when it's all done, it looks something like this. So as y'all will probably point out in the comments, I've got a little more flesh on me than your average corpse. So here to help me out with that problem is Mr. Posenstay, and, and he's gonna give me a helping hand on the rest of this build. Or an arm, I guess. Thank you. So for the arms, the plan is to replace my arm with this skeleton arm. 
So that means for all pictures and videos, I'm gonna have to tuck my arm behind my back so that only my shoulder is showing and I'll angle my body so that it really sells the effect. Then I'll take this skeleton arm and hollow out this section right here and then attach it to the shoulder right here using some thermoplastic as a harness. The first thing I'm gonna do is take my Dremel tool and cut away part of the arm. This way it can lay flat against my shoulder as if it was coming out of my shoulder blade. It is super, super important whenever you're using a tool like this that creates a lot of sawdust to use proper eye protection. I don't have my normal goggles right now, so I'm just gonna use this pair of sunglasses and I'll just try to look really cool when I cut apart the skeleton arm. I have marked out where I think I wanna be cutting this, but I'm also gonna be testing it every time I cut away a little piece to see how it's gonna fit onto my arm. So pardon my casual Door the Explorer cosplay, but I was afraid that the warbler would stick to the fibers of my sweater, so I had to change my shirt. But for this part, for the shoulder piece, all I did was take two strips of warbler and kind of heat them up a little bit just to melt them to the shape of my shoulder. I did this while my arm was in the position that it needed to be in, and in the back, this piece right here will tuck into the back of the corset, holding it in place. And from here, I can just keep heating it up and forming it and building it out and then attach the skeleton arm. This part might be a little bit difficult to do on your own just because you're basically missing an arm. So I invited my friend Chris over. You might remember him from the Nux build. Uh, go check that out if you haven't seen it. And Chris is also gonna be helping me with my makeup, but he's gonna be my second pair of hands for this. So now that I have this in the shape I want, I'm just gonna keep adding more blue pieces to the side until I have enough to mold on my skeleton arm. So I think if as long as I keep my body turned a certain way and tuck my arm behind my back, it looks like I don't have an arm, right? So now comes the fun part. We made a beautiful garment and now we get to destroy it. I'm gonna be using fabric spray paint to uh, bring this dress up from black to gray to blue and then all the way up to white. It's gonna be really pretty in its own special spoopy way. And now I'm gonna do the same thing for the bodice. And now as promised, we kill it with fire. So now that my bodice is all painted, it's time to cut a big old hole in it. Right under the right boob, Emily has uh, some ribs showing, so we're gonna use some of the ribs from our skeleton friend, who now looks like that old lady from SpongeBob, who in the wheelchair, who really likes chocolate, you know, the chocolate. Yeah, that's, that's what this is now. But anyway, now it's time to just finish up the corset and then we'll be ready to get into makeup. I'm marking out a squiggly triangle under the right boob of the corset and then cutting out both layers of lace with my scissors and an X-Acto knife. Next I'll paint the corset black and a little bit of red using acrylic paint to give it some depth and to make it look like my flesh is just rotting away from my body. Super sexy, right? Then I'm going to further mutilate my skeleton friend and attach some of his ribs to the corset to complete the effect. Make sure to sand down the edges so you don't get poked. So now that the costume is mostly done, I have my super spoopy eyes in. It is time for makeup. Chris is gonna help me here and kind of get back at me for turning him into nuts the last time. Revenge. So, yeah. So um, let's get to it. Uh, what are you gonna do first? Um, I'm gonna start off by doing a darker blue in her eye sockets and also in all of her contour. Then after that, we're gonna go over the entire face in a lighter color. So it kind of just looks like everything is sunken in.
Thank you all so much for watching. This concludes our super spoopy Halloween episode of DIY Cosplay Shop. Let us know in the comments below what you want us to build next, and also, what are you gonna be for Halloween this year? And if you wanna see more of me, you can follow me on Instagram, at Elizabeth Rage, and until next time, that's my name, Elizabeth Rage, and now you can cosplay. See ya. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, don't just hit that like button, but check out our friends over at Wisecrack. They're funny and super smart and use science to dive into the deeper meanings of your favorite movies, TV shows, and video games. Click here to check out their video on the hidden meaning of The Purge. Let's just say it's not what you might think. So check out Wisecrack and tell them that Ami sent you.